Doug and Tony have found themselves in a barn in 1861 where a group of men are plotting to kill Abraham Lincoln. It's February, he's on his way to his inauguration, so he's not even president yet. But the leader is a follower of John Brown, the abolitionist who not only called for violence to wipe out slavery, he engaged in quite a bit of it himself. He wasn't above simple murder, and he ended his life at the end of a rope for it. After that, it didn't matter what he'd done, his disciples had a martyr. And disciples like this guy were ready to march in John Brown's holy name. Lincoln is coming through Baltimore on his way to his inauguration. We will have the opportunity to kill him within the next 12 hours. His brother Matthew said Jeremiah there was with John Brown at Harper's Ferry. If he was and he's still alive, he ran away. Pretty much all the men that stayed with Brown were killed. He took over a federal armory with the intention of arming the slaves, then leading them in a revolt. Except the slaves didn't show up. Only a relative handful joined him and the whole thing was a fiasco that led to his downfall. PR, dude. Gotta get the word out that you're doing this and find ways to get people excited about it. You can't book a great concert, not tell anybody about it until the day of, and expect a huge crowd. People have stuff. You have to plan for the stuff. He didn't plan for the stuff. Seems to me I remember reading about an earlier assassination attempt against Lincoln. I'll program the history computer. Those guys have a different problem. They just watched Lincoln's assassination at Ford's Theater, but the computer says it's February 1861. They're trying to figure out why. What do you make of it, Ray? How could we have picked up that earlier time zone without Tony and Doug being there? I... I don't know. The obvious connection is through the two separate attempts on Lincoln's life. But it's almost as though the tunnel is making its own projection independent of the probe on Doug and Tony. Oh, you finally noticed it's been doing that? By killing Lincoln here in Baltimore, the Southern secessionists will be blamed. And in revenge, the Northern states will invade the South. And the cancer of slavery will at last be rooted out. Maryland was a slave state, and Baltimore was considered dangerous for Lincoln. But this guy is an abolitionist. An abolitionist with selective morals, I guess. Not only is it all right to murder a man, it's all right to start a war based on a lie, as long as it's for a righteous cause. Glory, glory, hallelujah, how we're going to stick it to ya. No, Carver. I want to question him. Scott, get after the others. Carver, get a message to the train dispatcher. Order him to stop the president's train at the old depot here in Baltimore. I'll meet him there. Yes, Mr. Pickard. That's Alan Pinkerton of the detective agency that still bears his name. He was head of security for the president-elect's trip from Illinois to Washington. And General Kirk is correct, there is a record of an alleged plot to kill Lincoln in Baltimore. It wasn't nearly as dramatic as what we'll see here, and a lot of people eventually came to believe the whole thing came from Pinkerton's paranoid imagination. We have no way to know for certain, so let's see what this version of the story looks like. While he's interrogating Doug, Tony has no idea what's going on. Where are we? We brought you here. This is our house. And you are... He wants to know about Doug. He was captured. We saw him led away. Just a morning train. We don't uh, live too far from the tracks. Can we get to Doug? I don't know. Hello, young Tom Skerritt. He was still making his way into the acting world with small parts. He would finally start gaining a little fame as the forgotten member of the MASH movie, Duke Forrest. A lot of people will also recognize him from the Alien movie, as well as the series Picket Fences. Well, there must be some way. Who were those raiders? Some government men. We can't tell where they took him, though. Look, he's not important. That's a matter of opinion, dude. His priorities may not be exactly the same as yours. Tony pretends to be so disoriented he doesn't know what day it is, which is a nice little maneuver. And we find out about the other member of this jolly little family. Still asleep. We'll have to keep our voices down. Our little brother, he's only 11. His name is David, which I have to admit is a good and noble name. But that's not important right now. Jeremiah thinks that despite the raid in which four of his men were killed, the three of them can still pull off the assassination. Tony says, it's impossible. He can't explain that he knows because the actual assassination happened after Lincoln left office. Nothing's impossible. 
John Brown and just a handful of us took over an entire arsenal. And if a traitor hadn't exposed us, we'd have gone on to rally the entire nation to our cause. That's a nice bit of revisionist history. He couldn't even rally the locals, much less the whole nation. That was his downfall. Jeremiah there seems to think he's John Brown's heir apparent or something. Worse, he seems to think that's a good thing. I made this. It's a timing dial. All I have to do is to set it for as long as I want. A time bomb? Yes. When this mark here reaches this one at the top, a firing pin strikes a spark. Before Matthew could say anything, his little demonstration set the bomb off. The tunnel managed to yank Tony out just in time. The just three of us can't do it! Three is plenty. You and Matt cause a diversion while I get on the train. Hey, what's for breakfast? I'm hungry. Yeah, we'll fix you something. Now, you, uh, you go get dressed. I'll bring my clothes in here. In your room, David. Stay there till I call you. What did I do? Way to go, Jeremiah. Not only did you wake him up yelling at Tony, you've made him think he's in trouble. What happens to him if your plan fails and you and Matthew get yourselves killed? What's that? David. Uh, that's, uh, that's kind of a clock. Now go on. It's a funny looking clock. David doesn't know about any of this. They've done their best to keep it from him. I repeat, what happens to him if you two get killed or arrested? Have you even thought about that? I may as well go ahead and express my frustration now. Nobody's going to ask that question. I can't believe Tony wouldn't think of it and play the little brother card to talk them out of it. But David never factors into it. Jeremiah seems to think he's got David off in some kind of protective bubble where none of this will affect him. But if this stunt leaves him without any older brothers, it will most definitely affect him. It annoys me to no end that it will never come up. Nobody asks, what about David? Take it from me, a David should never be neglected or overlooked. Well, there definitely was an assassination attempt in 1861. Here's an editorial from the New York Tribune, uh, February 25th, 1861. It tells about the assassination plot, but it doesn't name anyone. That's because nobody could ever come up with any names. The whole thing was as vague as it could be. Uh, this is strange. Two items naming different groups of conspirators. Oh, I think I've got something that explains that. This is Alan Pinkerton's record book. Uh, let's see. He says, uh, yeah, several of the conspirators use code names. The whole thing seems to be controversial. Now, here's an item that says Pinkerton was hardly involved at all. It depends on what you mean by involved. He oversaw the whole thing, and it happened according to his plan. Look at this, <laughs> from Leslie's Weekly. Lincoln's political enemy certainly had a field day trying to make him look ridiculous and cowardly. He didn't read the whole thing. They accused the president-elect of jumping at shadows and seeing conspiracies where there weren't any. Oh, here's something, written by one of Lincoln's closest associates, Ward Hill Lehman. This is on advice of Mr. Judd, the president agreed to Mr. Pinkerton's plan to travel without his family and associates. Pinkerton's intention was to spirit the president through Baltimore and detect it. Which he did. There was a city ordinance against running trains through the city at night, so they unhitched Lincoln's car and pulled it through the city with horses. A big, adoring crowd gathered on the station platform to greet him at the time he was supposed to be coming through, and they were disappointed when they learned that he'd already been there and gone. Both Lincoln and Pinkerton caught a lot of flack for that, too. That was the cowardice that editorial was talking about. Pinkerton. I've told you everything I know. I was in the barn and I overheard the conspirators. You were one of them. Admit it. I was sleeping in the barn. Sleeping in a barn. Man, with your fine clothes? I had no money. You know that. You searched me. You carried no identification either, so if you were caught, you could lie without trapping yourself. Pinkerton wants the names and addresses of the other conspirators. Doug says their ringleader's name is Jeremiah. That's all I know and they said they intend to kill the president. I don't want them to kill the president. That's why I'm telling you. Either you're a fool or you think I am. If I were in your place, I'd be admitting it is all a mistake, that all I broke up was a card game. You confess to the plot and say you're an innocent bystander? Have you ever considered that I could be telling the truth? No. It's easy enough to check out his story. Go house to house and find out how many Jeremiah's there are in the immediate vicinity. I have a feeling you won't find that many. What's wrong, Jeremiah? Trains come. No trains do here for a couple of hours. I'll go over the tracks and take a look. 
It's the president's train. Pinkerton changed the schedule as part of his security measures. Baltimore was probably the most dangerous stop they had to make along the way, but they couldn't avoid it. They had to change tracks in the city to get on the line that would take them to Washington. So he took all kinds of measures to throw off potential assassins, including this one. Jeremiah's all wrong about Lincoln. We don't talk politics in this house. Well, sure you do. At least twice I always hear Jeremiah. Why don't you brag about big ears? Support my lie, boy. Tony presses forward. Your brother doesn't understand what Lincoln's been saying. That's enough, Matthew. You and Jeremiah will never succeed in what you're trying to do. David, you're going out and chop some kindling and back. This would be the perfect time to play the David card. If you fail, what happens to him? If you succeed but get caught or killed, what happens to him? I'm quite irritated at these writers. Sometimes you have to kill, even if you don't want to. We're like soldiers, and we're, we're fighting a just cause. Who appointed you to do it? Who or what gave you the authority to make this kind of decision and carry it out? You're not a soldier. You're a tin-horned vigilante. But what about David? How long do you think you could keep him from finding out what you're up to? Wrong question, Tony. The first time I watched this, well, second time, if you count when I was 13, I got my hopes up when he said, what about David? Then he went that direction, and I still don't understand it. David's a child. They're risking leaving him without a family. It's impossible to believe somebody wouldn't bring that up, in particular Tony. You're refusing to call Jeremiah's scheme what it is. It's murder. And David's going to find out sooner or later. This is agonizing. Finding out is not the worst thing that can happen to David. Jeremiah says killing Lincoln is right. Matthew, that won't work. Look, just because Jeremiah's giving the orders doesn't make you any less responsible. If you help him try to kill Lincoln, you'll fail, I'll tell you that. But you're going to feel like a murderer the rest of your life. <laughs> I want to hear no more. You just quit talking all that sensible stuff. We got us a cause. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Wish I had some chicken bouillon. What's the meaning of this additional delay? Another rumor? Not at all, sir. Against my better judgment, I let my friends persuade me to agree to this ridiculous plan of yours to smuggle me through Baltimore. Sir, if you'll let me tell you, I'll... By all means, tell me. But I'm tired of rumor and hearsay. I am tired of people on TV who constantly interrupt each other. This Lincoln is, what's the word I'm looking for? A bit of a thick. Thank you, Cato. I can always count on you. Until I'm certain the way across Baltimore is safe, this train must remain here, sir. Aren't we in Baltimore? Well, yes, sir, the north section of the city. This depot and most of the buildings in this area were abandoned to make way for a new road. How long will we be forced to wait here? I can't tell, sir. If, if you'd like to warm up, we have a stove going inside the depot. Yeah. Wouldn't he have one in the car? But he goes to the depot. Take him back into town and lock him up. Yes, sir, let's go. Mr. President, come here. Believe me, sir, I had no part in any plot against you. I've yet to hear a felon insist that he's guilty. But don't take him away yet. I want to talk to him. Jeremiah heard the whole thing. We got him, Matt. We got him. What are you talking about? Got who? Lincoln. He's at the old depot. But he wasn't doing the city till tonight. Well, he's here now. I figure they intend to keep him there until they think it's safe to take him through town. He also noticed that Tony's friend is in the depot. All right, boys. Now, the plan is the same. Except instead of blowing up the train, we just simply blow up the depot. You can't. You'll kill Doug and everyone else who's there. Well, what's wrong with that? We'll get Lincoln. That's all that's important. Your friend will die for the cause. He didn't sign up for your precious cause, Jeremiah. If you don't let him choose whether he wants to die for the cause, that's called murder. Tony won't have it, so Jeremiah says, fine, I'll kill you now. No, Jeremiah, you can't kill him. You got in yellow too? I won't stand for murder. You quitting me, Matt? All, all he's done is disagree with you, Jeremiah. I tell you, if you kill him, I'm not with you anymore. You gonna stop me, Matt? I intend to try, yeah. Jeremiah relents and says, tie him up. Hey, what's the matter? How come you're tying him up? Go on, tell him, Jeremiah. 
Tell the boy what you plan to do. I'm warning you. Aren't you proud of yourself? Won't David be proud of his brothers? Jeremiah's falling apart. Hate can only carry you just so far before it gets too exhausting to hang on to. But why me, sir? Why should men who want slavery abolished wish to assassinate me? I'm opposed to slavery, believe that eventually it shall cease to exist. Jeremiah is a follower of John Brown, sir. He wants immediate results. That's going to go right over Lincoln's head. John Brown was hanged, and so shall anyone else be who tries to start a revolt. Slavery is an evil that men of reason will abolish by reason. That's the whole problem, Mr. President. Men like Jeremiah are not men of reason. That's what Doug just told you. I wish I could believe that, sir. But four states have already seceded from the Union. By this time, it was closer to seven. Lincoln says, once I take office, I'll do everything I can to bring those states back into the Union. Doug says, I know you will. What if the seceding states refuse to rejoin the Union? You have a way of speaking that suggests you have an insight into the future. Doug says, I do. Lincoln says, okay, let's hear it. You'll... Not about me. The nation. Will the Union be standing a decade from now? Yes. Even a century after the decade, this nation will still be thriving. Neither of us will live long enough to test your prophecy. But it pleases me, nevertheless. He can't expect to live long enough to test a hundred-year one, but he could hope to live long enough to test the ten-year one. He didn't, but he didn't know that. Pinkerton and the others hear shooting outside, and they run to investigate. Did you fire those shots? Well, I reckon I did. I, uh, I can't kill rabbits by spitting on them. Rabbits? Why, well, sure. It's enough of a distraction to allow Jeremiah to plant the bomb under a bench against the wall of the depot. Mr. Pinkerton, perhaps you've heard I'm a patient man. Yes, Mr. Lincoln, I have. It's a myth. I'm tired of this delay. I must get to Washington. Sir, we've got to take every precaution. If I leave it to you, Mr. Pinkerton, I'll spend my entire term in this building. Until I'm certain the danger's over, sir, you must stay here. Not here. I'm going out to my railroad car. That means Jeremiah's bomb will kill everybody except Lincoln. Tony tried to tell him. Speaking of Tony, he's managed to get over to the stove and burn his ropes off. I don't think he noticed that he opened David's door. Jeremiah and Matthew are sneaking away from the depot. The bomb is in place, but they don't know Lincoln isn't going to be in the depot now. Stop that train! There's a bomb! Stop that train! Hold it. Get everyone out of the area. Bombs were planted. What's all the shouting about? Who are you? Look, there's a bomb around here somewhere. Nonsense. Take him inside. Come on. Wait a minute. Come on. Our image of Mr. Pinkerton here is not very flattering. He's a bumbling idiot who doesn't listen or pay attention to clues that are right in front of his face. Somebody in the writing department seems to have a mat on for him. Hey, Jeremiah's planning a bomb. Where? Here? He knows Lincoln's here. Oh, you two know each other. Get everyone away from here. That bomb could go off at any time. What's this nonsense about a bomb? No one could got near enough to place it. Listen to him, Pinkerton. That rabbit hunter could have been a ruse. This platform was left unguarded for a few minutes. Put the cuss on him, Carver. As I said, the word bomb should instantly set things in motion. No matter what he thinks of the delivery boy, that word means go look now. If you don't find anything, fine. But if you don't look and there really is one, you'll probably only make that mistake once. <laughs> Doug needs to work on that glass jaw, and head, and gut, and... Take it inside and show it to Pinkerton. Hold it! Get back! I 
found the bomb. I just threw it over there. Just keep your mouth shut and move. Inside! I told you to show it to him. This guy is too dippy to go take a quick look. In many ways, Alan Pinkerton was a Sir Dabn in his own right, but he was not this idiot. But considering what Tony just did, I'm not sure which one of them is the bigger idiot. The control room is trying to get a fix on the bomb. If they can bring it into the tunnel, they can jam the dial and keep it from going off. Mr. Lincoln wants to know what's going on. What was that shot I heard? Another one of the conspirators, sir. He's attempted a diversion, something about a bomb. There is a bomb, Mr. President. I can show them where it is. Is there a bomb, Mr. Pinkerton? No, sir. You base that on what? There's a simple way to prove it. I didn't show it to you. Why hasn't it gone off? It's a time bomb. Well, Mr. Pinkerton? Sir, uh, shall we go look for the bomb together, Mr. Pinkerton? No, sir. My job is to protect you, sir. From imaginary bombs? This Pinkerton is a pinhead. Lincoln is finding it easy to tie his brain in knots. So I was mistaken. This Pinkerton is a knothead. Well, there may be one, sir. Why, that's almost an admission that this man could be telling the truth. All right, sir, I'll investigate. Wait. Let me show you where it is. It might go off before you find it. If the control room transfers it, that won't help Tony's case. Neither will this. He's going to be helpful and give Jeremiah's clock back to him. After he has the freak-out nightmare of his life. That is not a clock. It's a bomb. Here, Lyon. It's Jeremiah's clock. Bring it out here quickly, David. When that dial gets to zero, the bomb will explode. David, please. Bring it out while there's still time for us to stop it. Please. He's too afraid to come out, but he'll try to jam the dial. His pocket knife isn't enough. Try one of these tools. Now to send him back. He would write it off as a dream, except for that tool with the handle made of... What is that stuff? Matt! Jeremiah! Sit down. Where have you been? I went down to the depot to find you. I saw the man who escaped. I ran to tell you, and then, then I found your clock. The clock? You found the clock? What did you do with it? Now, leave him be, Jeremiah. They said it was a bomb. No such thing, David. One of the men said it would explode, but I stopped it with a funny-looking tool. He tries to explain how he was in a thunderstorm, and then suddenly he was in a cave with some strange people, then another thunderstorm. I think he's the first person to go through the tunnel who actually noticed the explosions. And he was back after he stopped the clock. He left it by the horse trough. All right, you're going to take me... No! No, they said it was a bomb. It might explode. Do you want to get caught and David with you? Let's get away. I gotta get that. No. No, we failed. Maybe it's a good thing. You're wasting your breath, Matt. He's got the bloodlust now. You give up mighty easily, Matt. I'm gonna get on that train and I'm gonna plant that bomb. I don't need your help. I can kill Lincoln by myself. You wanna kill Lincoln? Even if it means sacrificing his little brother's respect. Someday you'll understand. Someday the whole nation will be proud of your brother. That's all it is to you, isn't it, Jeremiah? Honor. People, people cheer on you. You want to kill like it has nothing to do with our cause. Nothing to, to do with what we believe. Take that to mean you're right. He storms out and Matt storms after him. And if they think David is staying behind, they don't know him. <laughs> When a 
is done, Matt is unconscious and David is trying to revive him. Tony has taken Pinkerton to Jeremiah's house where they find tons of John Brown literature and all the makings of a bomb. Pinkerton tosses them the key to the handcuffs and runs back to the president. Apparently handcuffs were cheap back then. You could just give them to people. You gotta have me save Jeremiah. Keep him from murder. He'll be stopped. They're on the watch for him now. No, no, that's not what I want. I gotta stop him. They agree to help him. He sends David home and the three of them go to find Jeremiah. Jeremiah, don't, don't try. Get out of here. I'm asking for yourself and for David. Let the president be. It just wasn't meant to be. No! <laughs> I told you, he's got the bloodlust going. It's not about the cause anymore. It's not about Lincoln. It's about killing somebody. Right now, he doesn't care who. Lincoln's presence is a handy excuse. Why did he tackle him? Pick up something heavy and bonk him on the head with it. For the cause, glory, glory, hallelujah. Now your face is turning blue, ya. Yeah. All right, get back. Don't take another step, neither one of you. I came here to kill Lincoln. And if I have to get you two, I'll do it. Well, then you're going to have to kill me, too. Don't make me kill you, Matt. Won't that make David proud? And won't it make him alone after you hang for it? Kill me. Go on, Jeremiah! Kill me! The bloodlust is gone. As I said, hate can only carry you so far. And it is one cruel taskmaster, because it doesn't just control your life, it destroys it. Maybe killing Lincoln is not the way. There's your evidence of a bomb, Mr. Pinkerton. <laughs> Let's go home. Just in time for him to miss it. The perfect ending to our story of Alan Pinkerton, the first Keystone cop. Look at that tool. That could only have come from the time tunnel. Did they take the plastic handled screwdriver with them or did it stay behind for inquiring minds to ponder? Maybe David can keep it and analyze it and become a great inventor. with this tunnel and dropping them into the middle of gunfights. It seems to get its jollies doing that. It also seems to enjoy giving them less than stellar landings. Doug, look out! With some cover from the fort, they break free and make it to the gates. We haven't gotten a good look at the blue coats of the fort yet, but there's no mistaking those other uniforms. Next week, the Alamo. We know how that one went. Glory, glory, hallelujah, gonna put a bullet through ya.